Okay, so the first thing we're going to look at here is a new mate available assembly level uh, called Profile Center. We'll just start off the mate tool and we'll go to Advanced Mates and we'll toggle on Profile Center and then we'll select our faces. So I'll just select other to select that face there and then that face there. And what the Profile Center mate does is it finds a center point of both faces and constrains them together. Um, now you've got some additional uh, control within how it mates here so we've got an offset distance that we can use so you could think maybe components along the length of the shaft and we can rotate our components by 90 degrees as per the global coordinate system we'll just press OK there and come out of the mate tool now as you would imagine um, those centers are constrained together so if you make any changes to the model it should update in a nice predictable fashion so we'll just change the size of the plate and the offset value from the top of the structural member there and you can see it updates quite nicely we'll also use the profile center mate to constrain our screws into the holes so we'll go into our mate tool again advanced mate profile center and this time I'm just going to select the cylindrical edge of those uh, and you can see it brings them together. Now uh, in SOLIDWORKS 2014 we introduced a, a new tool called lock rotation for concentric mates. You can see that functionality has been pushed out to the profile center mate as well so we'll just lock rotation of that, that one there and then we'll do the same for uh, this bolt here like so and just uh, just make note that a um, profile center mate which has had its uh, rotation lock is shown slightly different uh, in the mate tree. Okay, um, now you'll see here that this um, this shaft is concentric uh, with the, the bracket and what I'm going to do to constrain is I'm gonna apply a width mate between the two. So uh, we'll just select our four faces and go into our width mate tool. So the width mate is behaving as it did in previous releases. Um, it centered the um, bracket faces about the two faces of the arm that we've selected. But if we switch it over to the property manager, you'll see that there is now a, a constraint drop down. So it's defaulted to centered, um, but we do have some additional options on here. So you'll see that we've got dimension, so we can actually offset by a, a dimensional value or a percentage value. So that's similar to what we get really with the uh, the path mate. We also have this free option here, which just allows um, the two faces to, to pass through the, um, the extents of them, um, similar to a limit angle mate. So that's a really nice enhancement there. We'll just go ahead and uh, spin this round and we're gonna add a, a limit angle mate to, to this component here. So we'll just select the two faces and go into our mate tool and then choose from advanced mate to limit angle. Okay, now in previous releases of SOLIDWORKS when you were creating angle mates, it could be quite difficult to know which um, angle of the quadrant the mates were being taken from. So for example, if you were trying to angle two faces 90 degrees to each other, potentially you would have entered in 90 degrees for your, for your angle or it could have been 270 degrees. Now what we have is full control over the angle that we get. We have a reference entity box, which is optional. You don't have to fill it out. But if I select a cylindrical edge, you'll see that this pop-up appears, allowing us to control which quadrant we use for our angle dimension. So we'll select this one here. Um, I'll have a nominal value of 90 degrees. And a minimum value of zero. So as I press OK, we can be sure that we've got the right angle there. We just zoom out. Moving components with many degrees of freedom can be, uh, can be quite tricky at times. So we've got the shaft that's free to move up and down here. We've got this component which is free to, to rotate and also this component which is free to rotate. So as we grab hold of them, you can see that it, it's quite difficult to, to get them to, to behave exactly how we want because we've got too many degrees of freedom. Um, in order to um, combat this, we've introduced a new tool within the Move Component dialog box which allows us to fix and group components when we're moving them. So it's not like a permanent mate, it's just a temporary um, 
uh, thing that you can do within the, the move component dialog box. So we'll just toggle it on. Um, now I don't want the arm to move, so I'll just go ahead and fix that. And I'll just then group these two components together so they won't move relative to each other. So if we just resume drag now and begin to, to drag this, you'll see that that head is free to rotate through the 90 degrees that I set up earlier. So that's a nice tool that will come in useful on many occasions. And one of the nice things here is that it will remember your selection. So if you're constantly going in and out of that tool, you don't have to re-establish those uh, groups. Okay, we're gonna insert a new component into our assembly. So we'll just go to the Insert Components dialog, uh, choose our component, and bring it in. Now when we bring in our component, uh, we typically drop it down, we get it in roughly the right orientation, and then we mate it into place. Um, now what we find is when we drag in our component, we get this uh, pop-up that appears, which allows us to quickly um, position our component. So you can set whatever angle you want here, uh, and then you can choose to rotate about X, Y, Z as per the global coordinate system. So if we go around Y a couple of times, we'll get it in roughly the right position, and then release it. Okay, so I'll then go into my Mate tool, and make those faces together, concentric, and we'll go tangent as well. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We'll now bring up our interference detection to show another improvement. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and calculate that. And if we just have a look at the interferences, you'll see that it now sorts them from largest interference to smallest. If we right click, we can sort it the other way around. You'll also find within here that if uh, we're not worried about very small interferences, we can just ignore all interferences that are smaller than a specific value. Okay, that leaves us with three interferences in our part, and you can see that they're where the shaft of the arm passes through the, the bracket hole. Now if we open up this bracket, um, we've got our ball here, um, which has some dimensions constraining in the size of it. Now, rather than change those dimensions, what we're gonna do here, just to highlight another new piece of functionality, is add in a brand new bore. So I'm just gonna unsuppress that bore, and what that does is it, it creates a brand new cut over, to, over the top of the old bore, meaning the previous bore faces are no longer in existence. Now, the result that has when we go back to the assembly is that anything that was mated to those faces will show up with an error because those faces are no longer there. So the normal workflow to resolve that would be to edit the concentric mate that fails. You can see there that it's missing the old ball face. Uh, we just re-establish a new face for it to mate to, and then we press OK. So nothing different there. But when we exit the tool, we now get this message. There are other mates with the same missing references. Would you like to replace the other missing references with the one listed below? So if we say yes to that, that's just gonna fix all of those mate errors which were referencing that same face. You can see my tree is now fixed. So that's a really nice enhancement there. Now we have three instances of the clamping knob within the same assembly and I want to adjust just one of them. Um, so in previous releases what I would have had to do is open up the clamping knob, save a copy out and then replace the, the one that I want to change with that one in the assembly. Now what I can do to speed up that process is just right click on the clamping knob in the tree and just choose to make it independent. It then brings up a save dialog box, we give it a new name, and now we have a brand new component independent of the other two within our assembly, and we can adjust that component without affecting the other two. If I go ahead and just delete this part out of the assembly, when we delete the part, we also delete the dependent items, which are typically the mate features. Um, we can have the choice of deleting the child features or not, but now we have this advanced basic tab that we can toggle between. And if we go to advanced, we can just selectively choose from the list exactly what we want to remove and what we want to leave. So I could remove the concentric and the slot, but leave the width 
which would then show with an error, but then I could re-establish the, the references. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that out. We'll then just window around those components and use the copy with mates tool to um, bring those to the other side. So we'll just re-establish our references here. And you'll see that copies across with no problems at all. Um, the thing that I wanted to highlight there was just an extended functionality with the uh, with the uh, copy with mates tool. It now supports uh, uh, width mates, um, symmetry mates, and the new profile center mate. So a nice addition to the tool set there. If we switch back to the PowerPoint, uh, we'll just uh, summarize what we've seen. So we have a new mate type called profile center mate. We've seen some enhancements to the width mate. We can now temporary fix and group components to remove. We can define the quadrant uh, for an angle mate. We can rotate our components on insert. We can replace failed mates uh, automatically. And we can take a component and make it independent of the others. We'll now move on to Ed for SolidWorks simulation.